Okay, so this is the base mix for the diamond solution. And just to recap, it's a one to one mix of vegetable glycerin and dipropylene glycol with added diamond powder in roughly a 3% ratio by weight. For this small container holding 15 grams, I used 7.5 grams of each liquid and 0.5 grams of diamond dust. You can use any diamond size you prefer, but I opted for 3000 grits equivalent for polishing and stropping, which translates to a 6 micron diamond dust. Now, from this base mix, we can adjust the thickness for different application, and this is important for ease of use. The base oil mix, for example, is too thick to be sprayed. I have this small spray bottle that would be perfect for applying the diamond solution to a strop. So I started by mixing the same amount of fluid and diamonds as before. However, the oil mix is too thick and the spray bottle can dispense it properly. To remedy this, I simply added a tiny bit of regular water, instantly thinning the solution and making it sprayable. Now, the third option is to make it thicker, again using the same base mixture and diamond content. This time I am adding a bit of colloidal silica. This lightweight powder has various applications. I had it because I've been using to rigidize the ceramic wall of my forges, but it can also thicken resin and other fluids for arts and resin castings. Adding colloidal silica makes the solution thicker. Uh, you'll need to mix it well and use a significant amount, probably around three times the volume of fluid. And you can also add colors here. Uh, I had some blue food coloring that worked out well, allowing you, for example, to color code different grid sizes. This version mimics the diamond paste available for polishing and lapping, so I transferred my mix into a syringe as well for easy application. And you can make a lot of it for a much lower cost than online option and likely for better quality and higher grid concentration and customizable colors. And that's it, three versions of the same diamond solution. The base oil mixture is great because it's easy to make and it will never separate making it perfect for long-term storage without the diamond sinking in the bottom. Adding water makes it thin and sprayable, which is convenient for stropping, but be cautious with the amount of water to prevent the diamond dust from settling. I did add too much water in one of my testings, so you can see the diamond on the bottom after a day or so without shaking. But hey, even if it does, just shake it well before use uh, the dust will mix back and it's not a big deal to me, but it's worth mentioning. Lastly, adding colloidal silica thickens it, allowing you to transfer it to a syringe for easy application, similar to the diamond polishing and lapping paste available online, but with better quality and in larger quantities. And that's my recipe, it's inspired by this video and this comment but the use of colloidal silica was my idea, so if you have suggestions for alternative thickeners, be sure to let us know in the comments. Now, as for why I made this video, it all comes down to the recent videos from Alex at the channel Outdoors 55. He reviews many stones and sharpening techniques. I highly recommend checking out his video, by the way, and not to spoil any of his content, but he seems to be a big fan of diamond solution for stropping, and that's what got me interested in mixing my own solution for stropping and polishing. I also decided to make a new strop, so here it is, a nice piece of soft, high-quality leather. I usually just clamp this to my table, but today I made a nice holder for it. I found this little ceramic tile that is the same exact size as my stones, so it fits perfectly in the stone holder. To secure the leather to the tile, you can use contact cement. It works great with leather. Just wait for it to dry before connecting the two parts, as the instructions say. Later, I flatten the leather with a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and the new strop is ready. During my testing, I tried all the solution for stropping and I'll say the paste 
is the one I don't like because it makes this strop sticky and prevents the edge from sliding well uh, while the two fluids perform pretty much exactly the same. I think if you spray a few drops of fluid before stropping you'll always have your strop loaded with fresh abrasive on the surface making it work incredibly well. By the way, of course you don't have to make the tile like I did uh, during my testing process I just made a few of these classic strop with just a piece of plywood and they work exactly the same. And that's it. For tools in my workshop now, all I need to get shaving sharp is the 400 grit diamond stone and this strop. It's incredible how sharp you can get stuff with just these two steps. I'm very happy with how my diamond solution is working and I'm also glad I can make the paste because I've been using it a lot for polishing Damascus and I really like the finish and contrast it leaves on the blade. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care and see you soon.